sound recording. I appreciate your taking a few minutes to do it. My pleasure. And I usually start with asking when did you first think about doing anything with music? Well, I've loved music since I, my daddy played the fiddle in a... I just always loved it, and when he brought home a record player, I, he had some 45s, I just took to it and started learning the songs, just to sing them, I didn't play an instrument. Then he brought home a guitar, and I was about eight or nine, and I started, he taught me a few chords, and so I started playing rhythm for him while he played the fiddle, and wow. pretty soon, you know, I knew more songs, and they ended up playing with a few bands by the time I was a teenager, wow. and I just, just always loved it, I had an affinity for it. Do you remember back then, was there, did you have a recorder of any kind, or did your dad have a recorder of any kind where you could listen to what you were playing? No, just record player. All we did was play with the records. And meet up phonograph. Okay. When you were in high school then, you played in bands? Yes, I went to Honky Tonks down on Roosevelt Street in San Antonio, oh. Surfside Inn. Oh, what a dive that was. I hate to think <laughs> about it. Didn't even have a... Uh, it had a dirt floor, I think. Wow. How old were you? <laughs> 17 by then. Wow. Maybe 16. It's a long way ago. Did your dad keep playing any, or do you...? No, he, he, you know, he didn't keep an instrument very long. He always sold it because he wanted money for this or that, so... <laughs> uh, so, but I wouldn't let him grab my guitar and sell that, so... <laughs> kept that. <Good. laughs> when did you decide this was going to be an avocation? Well, I just loved it so much, I just kind of refused to do anything else. When did uh, you first start playing professionally? I think when I was 19, I got a job with Jimmy Heap out of Taylor, Texas. And he had a bus, and oh. they wore uniforms, and they had a show, and oh, oh man, I thought I'd hit the big time. <laughs> really? Okay. Where all did you tour? Well, mostly Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, I think we went to Arkansas a few times. Just regional, local, and, you know. What were you playing at that point? Were you, uh, well, Jimmy, what Jimmy's part band. In the band? Yeah. I was a played electric guitar. Okay. Mm -hmm. and Jimmy Heap and the Melody Masters. Okay. Thank you. When did you start collecting guitars? Or was it back then? Well, uh, I wasn't really a collector back then, and uh, I just had what I had, you know, and. You know, back then, you know, money was hard to come by. I was married and we had a baby and I had a house payment, so it was kind of hard to get a bunch of guitars together. Right. How, how much were you on the road? Oh, every, every weekend or so, you know, three or four days a week, something like that. Did that band record? Jimmy? Yeah. He did in his old days, but not so much in his okay. later days. But you, you didn't know. record with them as a band? Or? No, I don't think so. When was no. the first time you remember hearing yourself recorded? Oh, let's see. I think I played on a commercial or two around Taylor, Texas. Okay. So it was in a studio then? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Some had a, somebody had a studio out at a farmhouse or something. Right. And I had my Les Paul guitar by then. It sounded really good. Right. Wish I still had that guitar. Mm. How long did that band stay together? What did you do next? Well, uh, let's see, I stayed with Jimmy. He was real good to me. He was like a mentor, and he helped us get into our first house. And and uh, Stephanie, my daughter, our daughter was born in a, in that town. And after Jimmy, I was, and Jimmy died in a boating accident. I don't know if you'd heard of that. No. Wow. He died in a boating accident on Lake Buchanan. Hmm. He was out fishing with an old fishing buddy, and the boat. I don't know exactly what happened. Anyway, so after that, that was '77. That was a bad year, I think. I think Elvis had just died. Jimmy had just died. Mm -hmm. It's tough times. And I just started freelancing around. Well, we started a band called Silver Creek, and it was a really good band, and that lasted about five years. In San Antonio? Or? Mm, yeah, they were out of Waco, and I was out of Taylor, so we all converged into Austin and started oh, playing fun. all those dance halls around here, like Silver Dollar and all of that. <laughs> oh, wow. and, so and where did you move on? Well, after that, I was fortunate to uh, land a job with George Strait. Wow. Okay, how did that come about? Well, they say, you know, being at the right place at the right time, George's guitar player didn't want to go on the road, and I was, you know, times were tough for me, because, you know, I still had a young child, and my wife worked, but, you know, we needed, I needed steady work, so right. when that came available, I, I jumped on that bus and 
went out to tour with George for a weekend. And uh, I told him I was available if, if he needed a guitar player. <laughs> so <laughs> when was that? What about what year? That was uh, '83. Oh wow. And uh, so that was 83, and uh, he said, no, Rick, I'm looking for a singer to front my band and open up for me. And I said, well, I appreciate the opportunity. At least I can say I played with you, you know. And, and he was up and coming now. He had just had that one hit out, I think, maybe two. two right. but, but he was still playing clubs and the same beer joints we all played. He played the right. Silver Dollar and places like that occasionally. And, but he said no, and then later on, before we got home, he came out. And I don't know if he felt sorry for me or what, but he just said, <laughs> well, I like your guitar playing, and I'm, I think I'd, I'd like to have you in my band after all. So wow. I said, thank you, George. <laughs> really? and, uh, and it was sticking around with him. for quite a while. I mean, he yeah. He, he was, are you talking about George's touring schedule? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was gone like over 200 dates a year for wow. years and years until he finally slowed down. Wow. Did y'all travel by bus or? Did yes, by bus. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Did that get old? Or? <laughs> no. You, you think it gets old, but when you go back to traveling in a van, you're going. That bus is pretty nice. Oh yeah, I bet. The van stayed pretty consistent too, didn't it? it seems mm -hmm. like oh yeah. Years. yeah. I mean, we talked to Ray Benson. It seems like he just kept a continual turnover going on. Yeah. So that was good. Well, yeah, it says a lot about. Well, I mean, nothing against Ray, but no, you know, yeah. it's, uh, George has always taken good care of us. Right. When did, uh, do you remember when you just first did a TV show with him? Oh, that was such a thrill to be in a, he did a video one time of that video, uh, Check Yes or No, that was the first video. I I didn't want to be on it. I, I, I thought, oh, heck, you know, they don't need me. Let me sit over here and drink a cup of coffee. And, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all do this, you know, and they said, no, get up here, you know. So uh, but we, that's the first video. I had a beard. I don't know if you've ever seen that video, Check Yes or No. I, that's back when I had my my goatee or whatever you call it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't grow one now because it's too gray. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, I'm in that video, and he, I did a few more videos. The band did a few more vi videos with him, not me personally, but right. the band did. And then So you can see us standing around back there. <laughs> 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 We've seen you quite often with him on things like the Grammys and other things. You probably you did Austin City Limits, I'm sure. We did Austin City Limits, and Johnny Gimbel set in on that one. Oh wow! That was a thrill because he's one of my all-time heroes, Johnny right. Gimbel. I was just as thrilled about him as I was, and I don't who, know. Who are some of your other influences on your guitar playing? Oh, Chet Atkins, of course. I love Chet Atkins, and uh, even though I don't play with a thumb pick. Mm -hmm. But I always idolized him and his touch and his tone, and of course, uh, Roy Clark, and he was always like a really cool guitar player, all those zippy licks, and mm -hmm. Jimmy Bryant could play all those fast and neat stuff, and uh, of course, the guys that played all that pretty stuff like Hank Garland and uh, Spider Wilson and Jimmy Capps, those Nashville guys, they all had such pretty tones, and you'd hear them on those records, guys like that. Of course, Howard Roberts, too, and Barney Kessel and all the great jazz guys. Mm -hmm. You also probably did a lot of session work, I would imagine. Uh, well, we played on one of George's albums, maybe two, it's been so long. But uh, the, around town, I was fortunate for a, a few years to have some session work. Mm. It's kind of slowed down now, but I'm, I'm available. <laughs> right. but, uh, yeah, what about, you now have a pretty nice guitar collection. What does that include? Well, it's... <clears throat> you have a favorite. It turns into a collector type of thing because I guess if you have so many guitars, people think you're a collector. collector. <laughs> and then you, don't want to, then you don't want to get rid of them. The fact that you don't want to get rid of them because you like them so much, I guess that makes you a collector. You get attached. <laughs> yeah, you get attached. But a lot of the guitars I have I got just to, for promotion reasons, you know, oh, wow. because I played with George and I played them on stage. So I got a nice Gibson oh, wow. just for promotion. Right. And other guitars, I've got a nice Gibson ES-335, and I've got another, another nice Gibson Jazz Box, a, a 175, but I bought that one, but they gave me a like, discount on it, a very, very good discount. Who is the Rough Riders? The Riff Riders? The Riff Riders, the Rough Riders. <laughs> Sounds like Riff Riders. That's such a good, sorry. <laughs> 
Oh, I just thought it was a cute name, and yes. I put together a little trio to do a little sidelining while we're off the road and make a little extra pocket money. And it was me and uh, Terry Hale and Eric Hokanen, because I always admired, still do, Eric Hokanen, mm. fantastic fiddle player and guitar player. Mm. Mm. So we decided just to goof around. And so you'll do win. solo or do the Riff Riders? Or oh, sure, still, yeah. Still doing playing with George when he's playing, mm -hmm. right? That's sure, yes. Yeah. He's still, you know, keeps keeping the band on. Right, in spite of retiring, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for everything. You're, you're welcome. Thank you, Chris.